More than half of the homes that sold in 2023 were brand new construction homes. According to tax records, it looks like over 1,600 brand new homes sold in Roseville in 2023. In comparison, on the MLS, about 1,400 homes sold in what we call resale, which is homes that were built and not new construction and have sold by your traditional homeowner. In this video, I'm gonna talk about the pros and cons of purchasing a brand new home and how it might compare when you're thinking about buying a new place in Roseville. Now, one of the first and most obvious pros to purchasing a new construction home is that you're able to pick out all of your features and finishes. If you want to have a certain type of granite countertop or a quartz countertop or tile, I don't know if that's a still a thing anymore, but actually I know it's not still a thing anymore. You're able to pick out all of your finishes. So you can choose your paint colors on your cabinets. You can choose your flooring and all of those things that are important when it comes to the fixtures of a new home. You can also choose from a variety of different floor plans. Now, the same is true for resale, but it's a little bit harder to find different variety of floor plans in a specific neighborhood that you're looking for. Versus new construction, you can pick out from the variety of floor plans that they're offering in that subdivision. The other obvious pro when it comes to purchasing a brand new construction home is that you're gonna have all the modern amenities and modern, as well as modern finishes and fixtures. When I talk about modern amenities, I'm talking about the floor plan has been designed in a way that's attractive to today's home buyers. Architects are able to come up with designs based on what they're seeing from consumer demand, consumer lifestyle, the way people are living in homes nowadays, and structure the home in that way. Versus resale, you're kind of left to decide what features are important to you in a home, and you kind of have to figure out like the year of when those homes were being built, and you gotta figure out where in the city you can find homes that were built in that time frame and in that style of floor plan. Another not so obvious pro is the cost of maintenance on the home. You're buying a brand new construction property, so you're not gonna have to worry about replacing an HVAC system or repairing a roof or really doing any real maintenance to the property for the next like 10 years or so, especially when it comes to significant systems. Also, the homes are built in a more energy efficient manner. So the cost of living is likely going to be a little bit lower in comparison to a resale home. You're gonna have a smaller electricity bill most likely, you'll have a smaller gas bill, your home will just be more energy efficient, which could be very important, especially in the environment that we're in right now, where cost of energy is high. One other pro, now this may just be specific to our time frame right now. Things change, but generally speaking, builders offer incentives to work with their preferred lenders or service providers like title insurance, insurance companies, and things like that. One of the other incentives that exist right now and may change over time is the amount of incentives that the builders are offering in order for you to work with their preferred lender, title officer, or insurance broker. Now, what I mean by that is some builders will come along and say, hey, if you purchase a home from us and you use our preferred lender or title company or insurance officer, we will give you a, say, 2% credit towards your closing costs. So let's say you're buying a $700,000 house. The builder will say, great, we'll give you $14,000 towards your closing costs, and you can use that money to pay for your closing costs, you can use it to buy down your interest rate, or just pay for taxes and insurance and things like that. The reason that could be advantageous is right now, you might be able to get a 4.5% interest rate from the builder using their incentive, which is extremely attractive right now when we're looking at currently at the time of filming this, somewhere around a 6.5 and 6.75% and interest rate. Now there's no guarantee that this will last forever. However, it is an attractive option and probably one of the big reasons why new build is continuing to grow and sell a lot of homes during this time in the market. So despite all the pros, there are also some cons when it comes to purchasing a new construction home. I'm gonna go over those with you now, and those include upfront costs, limited availability, longer wait times, potentially less room to negotiate on price. And the last one I'm gonna to save till the very end, so stay with me because it's something that I think a lot of people overlook when it comes to purchasing a brand new home. The first con is the higher upfront cost. 
Now, when you're purchasing a brand new home, for the most part, many of the builders offer packages that are included with that property, especially the builder like JMC that everything that you see for the most part is included in that home. Now they do have some models and some subdivisions where you can customize a little bit, but for the most part, what you see is what you get. You don't have to have a whole lot of upfront fees associated with that. However, some builders do require a certain percentage of the upgrades that you choose in your home to be put as a down payment from the very beginning. For example, if you wanna improve your home and your upgrades are gonna cost about $50,000, you might have to put $25,000 into an escrow account in order to secure those upgrades. Versus a resale home, you generally just have to put that earnest money deposit down and then your down payment and closing costs when it comes time to close. The other con that I mentioned is limited availability. Let's face it, there are only so many homes that can be built at any given time. So when it, the builder is releasing their homes, they release in accordance to the demand, how many buyers are in line waiting to purchase a home, the construction availability, how many contractors do they have lined up to complete the projects, and overall, just how much land they have, how many homes they can build within a subdivision. So that brings me to longer wait times. When you're purchasing a new construction home, rarely is the home that you want just sitting on a lot waiting for you to buy and move into. In most cases, you walk into the office, they have a certain amount of homes that have been released for sale. Hopefully one of those homes that's released is one that you want to buy. Then you go into contract to purchase it, assuming nobody else is wanting to buy it also. And then you have to wait for that home to be finished. Now, finish time could go anywhere from a few months up to 12, somewhere in between. I would say the average is probably about seven to eight months. Not only is there limited availability, but there is also a longer wait time to purchase a place. If you have to get into a home immediately, new construction may not be the absolute best choice. The other con is there's less room to negotiate on price. Builders are building a home, and but in, in their mind, it's a product. And for them to negotiate on price only hurts their future sales. So what I mean by that is if they're building a home that they believe is valued at around $700,000, but they negotiate with you and sell it to you for $650,000, that now sets the next benchmark for the next home that they wanna sell that they believe is valued at $700,000. So builders are highly unlikely to negotiate on price. However, there are some strategies where you can still come out a winner, get the same value of that $50,000, but it might be structured a little bit differently, maybe through closing costs, maybe through designer credits or other incentives. And that I feel like is a, a whole nother video that we have to do. Just know that one of the cons is they're pretty firm on their actual selling price. One of the other cons is you're going to be limited on location. For example, if you were to purchase a brand new property in Roseville, you're really limited to about six subdivisions or six neighborhoods in Roseville. One is a very small subdivision called Brady Vineyards. It's on the sort of central to west southern side of Roseville. The next one is Placer Vineyards. That's a small community in unincorporated Roseville off of Kiefe and Wallerga. That's a subdivision, a couple of different clusters of homes that are being built. The third one is Sierra Vista neighborhood and there's a ton of new homes being developed in there and that is on the very far central west side of Roseville. Next up is Solaire, which is just bordering Sierra Vista and they are still developing homes there. And it's also right next to West Park. Now, West Park is almost done with their development of brand new construction homes. For the most part, the new homes are the ones that I've already mentioned. The newest community that's going in, newest master community is Whispering Creek, which is just north of Solaire and West Park on the northwest side of Roseville. And just north of that, the uppermost north side of Roseville that you can still buy a brand new home in is Fitament Farms. The reason I list that as a con is maybe you don't wanna be on the far north side of Roseville. Maybe you are going to be working in Folsom or Rancho Cordova or somewhere on the 50 side. Getting from the far west north side of Roseville over to Highway 50 can be incredibly challenging and add 25, 30 minutes on to your original commute. 
The reason I listed it as a con is because you're limited in the locations that you can choose from. A lot of people get drawn into the brand new home. It looks good, it smells good, they like the idea of the low maintenance, the new energy efficiency, they want to be able to pick out their finishes, they are fine with the general location and the commute time and all of that. They like the price, they like the incentive, but one of the most common things that is overlooked is the neighborhood and how it will mature. When you're purchasing a resale home and you're driving through the neighborhood, you have a pretty good good idea of what to expect from that community. Is it full of kids? Is it mostly mature adults? Does it have a lot of cars on the street? Are there kids running around in the road? Do people maintain their properties? These are all things to take into consideration when it comes to quality of living in a neighborhood. And when you purchase a brand new home, for the most part, all you see on the streets are contractors' trucks. It's tough to get a vibe of what the neighborhood is going to be like because there really isn't a whole lot of proof available for you to witness. Now that said, having a conversation with friends that maybe live in the neighborhood, yeah, they might be able to give you some insight but the reality is is most new communities have only been around for about a year or two so it's really just tough to know how a neighborhood's going to turn out so here's the good news if you're looking for a brand new home or you're looking for a resale home in roseville you have some options and when it comes to builders there are a lot of great builders that are local to this area that have been building for years as well as some national builders that you might already be familiar with. If you want to know more information about specific communities that I really have my eye on, communities that I think are a great overall bargain and offer the highest overall score when it comes to like quality of life, school systems, quality of home and overall price, reach out to me. I'm happy to have that conversation with you. I can even put together a new home tour for you if you're out in Roseville and want to go around and check out some of these communities. Thanks for watching my video. I'm Jeff Goolsby from the Goolsby Group, Mr. Roseville, and I'm here to just deliver information that is valuable to you in regards to moving to Roseville.